Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here and let's play some Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup in this Complete Beginner's Guide, continuing with our ranged character. We began as a gargoyle hunter and now we're still that, but we also worship Okawaru. So if I want to go down and explore Dungeon 11 a little bit, we can see if this is a reasonable challenge for us or if we want to immediately bail and do the orcish mines or the lair there is a cool vaulted room for sith muna getting some cash gosh potion of heal wounds needed that one okay we're back on the healing map and a scarf of shadows now um a scarf of shadows i'll show it to you Pushing I for the inventory, going down to our Scarf of Shadows, which... Uh, do, 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 do. Did we not pick it up? <laughs> we didn't. All right. There we go. Now I got it. And it basically um, reduces the distance the wearer can be seen and can see. So this is, again, similar to Dith, just not a good idea for us. We don't want to conceal ourselves because we're trying to exploit range um, in a sense of having more range. This is good for exploiting range if you want to sneak around and have enemies see you uh, or have less chance of seeing you from further I'm sorry, from closer. Now, um, here come yaks, a bunch of yaks. So I'm going to actually, even though this is unexplored I'm going to try my luck over here just kind of walk into this hallway so I can fight them one-on-one -on -one. and we're gonna go uh, heroism now and just go ahead and even if we miss we hit the one behind it's fantastic I'm even gonna step back one more time just to see that we hit them all in a row and you can see that at this point um, when we shoot an arrow we're doing two exclamation points and then the arrow burns for another one um, and he's not hurting us. He's not getting through our 32 armor class. This is where all of our fantastic work leveling up armor is finally paying off. Here comes a wraith. We can ding him without even doing heroism. And now we have three pips of piety with Sif Muna. Let's push shift six for the god screen. And now um, Okawaru will occasionally gift us throwing weapons, which is fine. But really, the main thing we want at this point is just uh, the ability to do heroism as much as possible. Here come a bunch of bees, and so when I see that I'm going to get mobbed by enemies, just like I did with the yaks, I immediately stop and look around the map for a choke point, and there's one over here. It looks like there's only a few bees, and remember, bees are not that big of a threat to us because we can't be poisoned so this is a, a nice time to be a gargoyle bees do actually a pretty reasonable amount of damage and are hard to hit and poison you so they're very annoying for their difficulty level and also they're annoying because they repeatedly poison you like yeah you might get poisoned and you use a potion of curing and then they just another one poisons you so you kind of don't want to use your potion but then you are in a tight spot because you're losing hit points. Now this is actually, you know, I had come back after a break. This is why I had banned in Dungeon 11 is because of invisible creatures. So um, we're going to get to a staircase or try to, unless we see the invisible guy come out. Okay, like that, good. And uh, whoops, we're gonna fire below us and we're gonna fire below us again and it's not there anymore. Oh, it's above us, okay. And we're just going to keep moving until we can see it and hope that we can hit it and kill it. We didn't. <laughs> um, and that's fine. I'm going to walk over here. He might step on the trap and uh, move us around. That would be okay. We have a hallway we can fight in over here. Okay, we killed it. So the only nice thing about Unseen Horrors with this gargoyle is that uh, they don't do a lot of damage that penetrates our armor class, and eventually we can get lucky 
and blind fire. To blind fire with a bow, you just have to push F and you can shoot anywhere. Um, you don't have to, like, push control and attack like you do with melee or anything. Okay. So, part of the reason I did want to leave this level with those guys is just because generally when you see one unseen horror, there's more on the floor. Um, and I, I say see in quotation marks because I'm actually not seeing them. I just know that that's what they are. Okay, I'm back. I had to step away for a moment. And I'm still debating this whole Dungeon 11 thing. But... I sort of feel confident that as long as I don't get into a spot where I have to fight an unseen horror and something else, I can just safely exit. Uh, but, you know, that could be not what happens. However, look what I just found. A scroll of enchant weapon. I do have, by the way, five teleports to get out if it's an emergency. Now, we're going to enchant up our bow. Our bow of flaming is terrific. You know, we'll need something if we survive long enough for orbs of fire, uh, perhaps, just because the flaming won't do anything to them. However, we will be in a spot where uh, we can maybe do enough damage where it doesn't matter. We'll see. All right. So I'm going to quiver. Do I have any curar darts? I do. I'm quivering the curar dart. By the way, it takes no time to quiver something. It's just um, rebinding a key, basically. So I'm going to try to throw the curar dart at that guy, and we got him. And we slowed him, so this means we can back away from him. Ooh, and we preserved the curar dart as well. I'm going to go ahead and use heroism now that I'm far enough away. Blast him, blast him. He's no longer slowed, though, uh, which is not ideal. Okay, so... <laughs> We were doing okay. Now he's, like, not slowed anymore. So, I think in this circumstance, I'm just going to have to run away. I would love to stay and fight this guy. Uh, but he can do so much damage to us. You saw he got a retaliatory strike when I was moving away just a moment ago. So, I'm going to try to just ditch this dude... And I should be able to. We move at the same speed. So as long as I get here and go up, I'm okay. All right. Well, remember that question I was asking about Dungeon 11? I think it's pretty much resolved. I could try to use a different staircase. Um, and, you know, make sure that that two-headed ogre is not there. But let's just get stronger somewhere else. We just did get a plus one scroll of enchant weapon so let's you know move elsewhere and get stronger i'm going to push shift x and i'm going to just target this staircase and i'm going to exclude it uh just so temporarily i don't make a mistake of going back down there and uh finding a two-headed ogre waiting by the staircase and have to i it wouldn't probably kill me at this point but what would happen is i'd have to waste a blinking or teleport scroll you know something like that and i really don't want to so I'm going to go, I'm going to push um, shift G and let's check out the Orcish Mines again. I'm just going to go to the first floor. Um, I don't know how to get there. It says, oh, okay. It's because I've excluded, uh, I think, uh, the Psyche floor maybe, or I'm not sure why. Sometimes the auto travel won't be able to get there if you've excluded areas or... Uh, to that degree. So where is the Orcish Mines? It is on Dungeon 10. Oh, and you're telling me you don't know how to get there. Did I not find the entrance? Go to the Orcish Mines. Sorry, I don't know how to get there. Interesting. All right. Um, Will? The Orcish Mines is going to be a staircase um, that is on this floor. And I've fully explored the level... Oh, you know what? That's why. I excluded the Orcish Mines. I'm, I, you know, I had forgotten. I, it, if the auto travel doesn't let you go someplace, it's either because you're walking through a restricted area that the game has set from, like, a statue or something shooting, uh, or you have excluded it personally, which I did. You can see right there. I did that because um, there is an orcish knight there. Now, I'm just pushing shift X, and when you move the cursor around with shift X, I can just push enter on that square, and my character will, like, run to that location, providing there's no enemies in route. 
And now I'm going to push Shift X. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Shift X. And we're going to just move over to this tile. And I'm going to push E again to take the exclusion off. Now, theoretically, enough time has passed that this enemy should be gone. Should not be there. The Orcish Knight or anything else dangerous. But that doesn't always work that way. So I'm going to just preemptively heroism. So that if I go down the steps, yeah. Of course, right? They're just all waiting there. You know how much time has passed? Usually, enemies will disperse, but in this case, they didn't. So, you know, what a disaster. So we're going to just move away, and I know I'm going to take some retaliatory strikes, but there's nothing I can do about it. I'm going to move enough into this situation so that I can just fight these guys one-on-one, -on -one, if possible. Uh, the Orcish... Knight has hit us very hard. He, unfortunately, has a plus one Vorpal Great Mace, which is like a disaster. So I'm probably going to have to actually teleport and just try to fight this guy at range. Yeah, I can't stand here and just take more than one hit. So I'm going to teleport. Um, and he hit us but did no damage, which is actually pretty fantastic. And I'm going to walk away. And walk away, and walk away, and we've teleported. He did hit us, um, but we're okay. And I'm going to just, before I rest, I'm going to see where I am on the map. I'm here. The Orcish Mine's entrance was over here, so it's very unlikely that they would be able to find me immediately. But I'm going to try to get myself into a situation where I have a long line of sight on any enemy. So that... Uh, like, this is pretty good. If they do want to come fight, I can shoot them from max range. All right, now I'm going to try to creep back over into that area. I'm using manual control. I do want to take out the Orcish Knight. I don't want to leave it just wandering around. I'm going to go down, and I'm just trying to make sure that I maintain the biggest field of vision possible. You can look at the mini-map, okay, on the middle right. And these brown squares are doors, so you can kind of see, all right, well, here's the Orcish Mines up here. And if they did come out and they wanted to get over here, they could only get here from these doorways up here or this hallway. And they very well could just be staying here or they could have gone up. So we don't know, like, what path they're going to take. But I'm going to need to start becoming aware of the ways that they could get to this location so that I can use it to my advantage and not get snuck up on and have to burn another teleport scroll. Okay. Let's just kind of check in here. I don't see anybody. So I'm going to go around this way. Okay. And I'm going to check in here. I don't see anything. So I'm going to move over here. And... Now we're getting closer and closer to the location. So I'm going to stay on the outside and just poke up through here. Anybody? Not yet. Okay. I am going to check this corridor back here. Yep, there they are. Okay. Unfortunately, they stayed together, which is a shame. So let's check our evoke options. Mine burst is 47%. Um, not bad. Okay. I really don't have a lot that I can do, unfortunately. He let out his battle cry to pump up the other guy, which is okay because it slowed him down for a turn. So if anything, um, I want to make sure that the other guy is not battle cried. I'm going to use a turn to heroism, and he battle cried, which is actually good. It slowed him down. I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to step, shoot him, step, and I am going to, uh, this is not ideal. I am going to try to fight him. If he gets a hit on me, I'm going to have to teleport out. It's very possible, too, that I just have to leave this guy and go to the lair. We'll see. I'm going to step back and shoot, 
and shoot. He's very hard to damage because of his, uh, yeah. All right, so we can push V on him, and it says that he could hit for up to 43 damage. So he can't one-shot us right now. But I have to say, I'm so far into this battle that... I have some options. I could try to Fear Scroll. Let's actually see if Fear works. All right, it did. So what you want to do when they get feared is you don't want to attack them yet. You want to just move away. Um, and he already lost his being afraid, which is completely unfortunate. But I can get a shot on him, another shot, and we got him. Great. I mean, we got to 46, so 43 was his max. And so it was risky. If I went below 40, I was going to teleport out or blink away rather and then my plan was to blink away to down here and then fire on him until we killed him because i had already committed so much to this fight i want to get rid of this threat and we hit level 12 uh, which is just tremendous intelligence is a terrible stat to get but it doesn't matter um we're gonna rest we cleared that guy out our armor class is sitting nicely at 30 um and our hit points are up to 73 let's look at what we're training I think Invocations is actually pretty decent for right now. I, I'll probably try to get Invocations around 10 at maximum and be happy with that for Okawaru. We'll see how it is with the higher level abilities, but, but for now we're doing well. There's an Orcish Warrior just wandering around up here. We're going to find him. He We feared him away, uh, so he's just kind of like he ran away and left his buddy. He's not really a threat. So it's not like we have to go kill him, but I like to be sure that all the threats are gone. Anyway, now we can go back into the Orcish Mines, which is tremendous. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, and here we go. You also, of course, want to kill that Orcish Warrior. I'm going to look around for him a little bit. You don't want to like come up the steps out of the Orcish Mines um, with like one hit point just barely escaping and then have him standing there to just kill you so sometimes what you can do um is yeah okay you can turn off the auto explore for the level and re-explore it if you want to just cruise around um but i'm okay just walking and looking for this guy i could shout um and try to get him to arrive like i know that he's probably the only thing left so you just kind of, I'm pushing T, and then pushing T again to just yell, and see if I can get this guy to come out and fight. He'll respond if he hears you. You worshiping Gozag now, buddy? He's so embarrassed because of what he did. Abandoning his, there he is. Let's just blast him. Bam, bam, bam. Got him. All right, perfect. Um, he had some plate armor too. Nice. All right, let's go back to the mines here. And let's just take a dip. Yep, there's people waiting for us. I'm just going to go heroism and shoot the warrior first. We got to kill this guy and then kill the other dude. And we're good. Rest up. Go back in. Okay. Uh, we're going to just push uh, S and bring up the warrior and uh let's go down and the priest should be right around here i don't know where he went okay there he is and these guys that are just like in robes we should start be able being able to annihilate them at this point and here comes a crowd so i'm just going to pull them back to the staircase see if i can kill that priest if possible and we accidentally killed everything by missing the primary target. You love it when you miss to win. Here's a troll. I am going to go heroic on this guy. This guy can hit us hard, but we're starting to get there. Here's a uh, teleportation area where we can risk it all for the biscuit. And as you guys have seen me play in this game, 
I generally never do that. Now, here is, unfortunately, an Orc Warlord, which is actually even harder than the Orcish Knight. <laughs> so, uh, this isn't great to see. It is probably going to be a situation where we need to go to the lair at this point. Now, I could pull this guy up the steps, right? And then I can, like, do heroism and try to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. But check him out. He is wielding a plus two greatsword. And he can hit us for 51 damage with 81% accuracy. Uh, so he's even worse. So we're just going to leave. We're just like, get me out of here. And let's go to the lair. The lair was hard, but not that hard. Yes, yeah, so we're going to enter the Psyche level. I feel like even if I saw um, Psyche, I could take her and we'll kill the Komodo dragon and the water moccasin. And now let's fight. So again... Maybe I'm off my rocker. Maybe I just have it all twisted. It used to be that eventually enemies would disperse, but in my experience so far in point two nine, the enemies just park themselves on the staircase and do not ever leave. Like that Komodo dragon was there for hundreds of turns as I left and explored and never moved. So I'm not really... Uh... That's not, not really a design choice that I salute. Like, I get it that they want to prevent you from stair dancing, but I don't think that should be something that they implement when there's only one entrance into the lair or the orcish mines. Like, what are you supposed to do? Like, I, I, I think that needs to be fixed. Okay. Um, you're supposed to just know that there's incredibly difficult enemies standing by the stairway that will never leave, that will get free hits on you when you walk down, and just be able to deal with it. Like, I don't know about that. Okay, I'm gonna fight. I get it that they would stay for a little bit, but like forever? Okay, here's a Hydra. So this is a tough one. I wish I had something of freezing to hurt this guy even more because we could slow him and then just kite him. So we're gonna go heroic and we're gonna shoot and just see if we can do some damage but we're not really doing very much damage. And God, he closed on us. That's right. They move faster than I wanted them to. I don't like this. We might be dead. Yeah, Psyche's going to be here, of course, right? Uh... Hmm. Well, Dungeon 11 doesn't seem so bad after all, does it? If we could hit this guy with cold, we would be in a good space. So what you can always do is just control F and just look for cold. And there's nothing. We could go control F and look for ice and there's nothing. So... Maybe yeah, I get my QR dart. Anyway, I can blink away from this dude. What I'm hoping is that he does a... Uh, oh, he's so fast it won't matter. I was hoping he would do a retaliatory attack as I escape his threat range. And then what would happen is... Um, I would be able to just run away. But that's not going to ever happen. Let's see... Do I have a good escape route handy? Not really. All right. How many... What kind of damage can this guy... It can bite eight times for 18 damage each, right? Yeah, so eight times 18 is more than the health that I have if he hit me with everything at max, which is unlikely, but it could happen. So what I need to do is... I'm going to try to get lucky and teleport, and then... Okay, we did. I, I just want to save my blinking scroll at all, if possible. Okay, and then we're just going to go down. I mean, Psyche and an eight-headed Hydra on this floor. How about that? I'm going to push Shift-X, and I'm going to just put another note. Um, and uh, eight-headed Hydra. Great. Okay. So we're going to escape, and we're going to go down, and we're going to rest. All right, so honestly, two-headed ogre looks better than everything else that I've had. 
Oh, it looks like I didn't fully explore Dungeon 9. All right. Let's do that then. Oh, the Boulder Beetle. That's right. That's right. So the Boulder Beetle can hit us for 32 damage, but when it starts rolling, it can do double damage, I think. Yeah, so it hit us, and we're just trying to kill it before it comes and kills us. And we did it. Very scary, but we got it. All right. And there's Dungeon 9 done. Let's move over here, maybe. And I'd like to go... Hmm. Where is the lair again? The lair is on Dungeon 8. Right, so with the Hydra. So then... Hmm. There's a warlord in the mines. <laughs> so I guess... We go back down to Dungeon 11. And, okay, this is a pretty good distance from this individual. So, I think what I'm going to do is just uh, go heroic and then shoot, 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 and we got him. Perfect. There you go. All right. And, ooh, Wand of Polymorph. That's actually pretty good. And there's our Curar Dipped. Uh, tipped dart. So Wand of Polymorph is something where, I think I've explained this before, but basically um, you can use it in a way where it's super useful to transform something that is like a hard counter to your character into something else of a comparable hit dice, and the wand will tell you like what you can change it into. And sometimes that can just absolutely save you. You can make some enemies, especially named enemies generally, into much easier things, providing you can affect them with the Wand of Polymorph. So it, it might be in our interest to level up evocations a bit to promote the successfulness of some of our wands. But right now, I'm okay getting hit points and uh, magic points through invocations because invocations will extend our heroism, and if we get into the next tier of piety where we can speed up combat, um, it'll help us be able to do that without failing. And that's a very powerful ability indeed. And oh, we found a file of floods, fantastic. Let me make sure, did I turn on all of the, I didn't. Okay, so let's turn on um, picking up auto all of these evocable items except the file of floods so remember you just push forward slash to open this up the slash that's above the enter key at least on my keyboard and then you click um condenser vein lightning rod you'll see box of beast is kind of grayed out um as is phantom mirror and that is um most likely something about okuwaru where okuwaru doesn't want you to make like a demon or something like that or uh doesn't like the idea of the phantom mirror in some way so you can't even use it um, we want Tremorstone, Lightning Rod, Condenser Vein, fantastic. Um, we don't really need spell books, but it doesn't hurt us to pick them up, so that's fine. Let's go. Alright, well, we're done with Dungeon 11, which is ominous. Uh, Dungeon 12 is really challenging, usually, but maybe we can do some of it. We could try to polymorph the Hydra, but... A lot of the times, um, animal-type enemies will have really, really high will saves, like hard to do, stuff like that against. Maybe not, though. We'll have to see. Oh, here's a ring. What is this? This is a ring of protection, which, you know, could actually be considered better than our ring of evasion for this character. Evasion is great, but protection, you know... In it would just add to our armor class. And what that could allow us to do is just tank even more effectively, like completely mitigate many of the hits from the Hydra, sort of, you know, enough that maybe we could kill it. I don't know. It's it's something to consider. Here's another potion of curing, which is great. Quarterstaff. And these are vampire mosquitoes. Okay. So not ideal. We don't really have a good place to fight them. I'm going to put them over here, even though they're, they're going to do three-on-one on us. But, uh... The nice thing is they can't... 
poison us or um, drain our health. I don't think. No, they don't. They don't. Um, they don't poison you. Right, right, right. They're just vampires, so they're just going to try to like drain our hit points if we hurt them. And you know they can, but we should be able to just out DPS them before that becomes a problem. And we did. Uh, we're going to just go up the steps and rest and do our best to kind of navigate this and hope we don't see something that's just incredibly difficult. Try to get a little bit of experience and some more items like a wand of acid. Great. So the way that they've changed this is there's now some different wand types in the game that they've introduced in point two nine that um, if you get them there are three different wands that are in this category of wand of acid and you can get them instead of acid and they have different effects um so in this case we got acid so for the rest of the game we'll only see wand of acid and we won't see the other two possibilities and i believe there is another uh maybe the wand of ice blast they did that with as well and they have similar effects like the ice blast wand um is a 3x3 three three AoE blast, and there's some other one wands out there now that do 3x3 three three blasts of different types of damage. And then the Acid wand, which I'm used to, is a old school wand. They've replaced it with some other ray type damage um, effects that don't corrode, but do other things uh, as well. Like, I think there's a one that like removes enchantments and things on enemies. Oh god. Okay. So... We'll fight one of these and run. I don't mind fighting one slime, maybe even two slimes, but I can't fight more than that. Okay, we got really lucky that they separated. You see how even this one slime, like, do not sleep on even the separated slime. They hit you for way more damage, at least than I ever am prepared for. All right, so I'm going to take one up the steps and fight it. I can beat one of these guys. I just can't beat a lot of them and we'll go down oh and we'll stare dance we got level four piety with okuwaru which means we can use finesse and you see even with our invocations that we've been leveling up it's a 10 percent fail let me go ahead and show you what finesse does greatly increase your combat speed right so this becomes insane with this character because um we can fire more arrows more quickly, right? And we're pretty slow at attacking, but we do a ton of damage. So if we can speed that up, that's really, really powerful. However, we're not going to be using it that much right now because um, it's going to take a good bit of piety. If I look at this, um, and I push question mark on finesse. You'll see that it's actually only a small ability of piety and five magic points. That's actually not that bad. Okay, they're both small. I think it used to be that Okuwaru's ultimate ability was something like finesse, and it took a lot of piety, but it was like it let you move faster as well, so it was kind of broken, so they redid it. Um, and now it's more manageable. Okay, I'm back. I actually just bounced out to the wiki just to double check. You know, they keep, they have overworked or overhauled Okawaru uh, in the last couple of versions. I wanted to make sure I had it right. And Finesse does affect ranged attack speed. I was going to feel really stupid if it didn't. It does. And it doubles your attack speed unless your attack speed is like below 0.5 or 0.4 or something like that. Which ours is not. But think about that. I mean, double the rate at which we fire these massive arrows from our longbow. This is so good for this character. So if we can get um, this ability to be a little bit more reliable. Yeah, we now have ways of killing Hydras. And the cool thing about Okuwaru is you can use Heroism and you can use Finesse. And they don't really have any negative effects except they take Piety and Magic Points. So we can use this to start taking down the higher level threats that we've had to run from and gain an edge so that we can explore more confidently in, in the dungeon. And this is why I was holding out for Okawaru. Uh, and this is kind of what you're looking for with characters at this midpoint stage in the game. You need something to bump you up over uh, a red threat level character. So I'm going to try to find this Hydra again, but I don't want to find anything else. I want to... Oh, here's a centaur who's, you know, futilely trying to damage us. And it won't really work that well. Short bow against long bow is uh, 
a tough competition, and given our damage, ooh, there's a potion of heal wounds, mitigation, it's even worse for him. All right, we're up to 248, so we're about 25% of the way to the point we need to be for getting the manual. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use heroism, step around, and just fight this manticore. Manticore is challenging. He's already put barbs on us, which means we can't move until they wear off or we'll take damage. So manticore can be tough because when he puts those barbs on you, if you suddenly need to run away or move, you're stuck. And, you know, it, it really uh, can add up. So you want to just try to fight them one-on-one -on -one until it doesn't matter. Okay, here we go. Let's show you. Six-headed Hydra. I'm going to heroism first because it will last longer. Then I'm going to finesse. And um, if I go into A and I go into my longbow, you'll see that um, hopefully it shows you. Yeah, my current attack delay is 0.5. So our plate only slows it by 0.4. And our current delay is 0.5 um, because we've doubled our attack speed. So now, um, if this guy's moving, you know, we can fire. Look, we got to fire twice before he even moved right there, and we killed him before he even got to hit us. This is the power of both of these buffs on at the same time. So that was a six-headed red threat level Hydra that we killed without taking a damage. Um, and also, of course, our attack speed gets increased by heroism because it increases our ranged attack and our armor which um, both are affecting our attack speed at this point. Now, here's a five-headed Hydra, and we still have our buffs on, so let's just launch into that one, and we killed it. And bam, um, those enemies were so difficult that we've moved up to fifth-level piety with Okawaru, which means we can enter into single combat with a foe, and Okawaru will start giving us equipment as we gain piety, and, uh, provided we stay at this level five of piety. Um, so, unbelievably awesome. The way that I understand that this works with Okawaru's gifts and any god giving you gifts like Trog is that you get set on a clock, basically, and then, like, over time, you're just chipping away at some clock counter that has been generated, and as you gain piety, you work away at that, and then once it reaches zero, you get an item. But if you fall below that piety level, I think then the clock counter maybe resets. I'm not sure if it is held or not, um, but... Either way, um, we're rolling. And you see, look at this. We just took out three enemies with the buffs still on. They last a lot longer than Berserk. Um, so they're not as powerful as Berserk, but they don't have the downsides and they last longer, provided you get your invocations up. I'm going to go ahead and identify these two potions here. And they're potions of cancellation. And that's really, really fantastic for us because um, we can use it to get rid of some negative things like Mark uh, that we don't want. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and kill these guys. And there we go. And invocations up to eight. Fighting to almost ten. And this is a staff of cold. Don't need it. A vampire mosquito. Okay. Centaur. Centaur is gray now, by the way. Um, there's actually a lot of enemies coming. So I could just stay in here and spam attack, but I'm going to be a little bit more strategic with this. So I'm going to step behind this and look for a useful place to fight. This is okay right around this corner. I'm taking damage, by the way, as I do this, but it's going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and use heroism and just start launching into these dudes. Oh, did you have a longbow? Let me look at that. Um, okay, we want to fight the brown ugly thing. Ouch, yeah, he does way more damage. Ooh, and now it's getting dangerous, actually, because we've been corroded, and a Komodo dragon is coming around the corner. So here's what we need to do. I'm going to teleport. That was scary. I got down, taken down to 30 there. And the reason I teleported is I made a calculus where it was like, what options do I have? I have blink, I have teleport, I have heal wounds, I could have gone finesse. Um, and those are all things that I could have tried to do right there. And out of those options, 
I figured that teleport was the least valuable of them and that I had enough time to use the teleport. It was close. I could have had to use a potion of healing if I would have got hit harder there until the teleport kicked in, but it worked out. And um, sometimes I apologize. I'll make decisions like that without fully explaining it because um, it's just so ingrained into my thought making process. And it might not seem intuitive, like why I chose that over the other options. First of all, it's not necessarily the correct option, okay? It's just what I did. Second of all, understanding when to do things like that is part of the skill of the game. And it will come over time. You will prioritize certain things over others. For example, Blink, I prioritize most of all. Um, heal Wounds, um, I like over teleport, but they're pretty close. And then some of these other abilities uh, are much less. Now, I could have gone Finesse, and I should have gone Finesse earlier. I kind of forgot that the Brown Ugly thing was in there. I thought it was all Centaur, so I was okay. But I wasn't. But luckily, we were able to get out of it. Now, unfortunately, because of my carelessness in choosing that fighting location, because the Komodo Dragon was able to come around and flank, and we took some corrosion damage, I ended up having to waste a consumable. And that might not seem like a big deal, but it starts to add up. And in all reality what will separate your successful runs or your deep runs from the ones that aren't as good is if you run out of consumables because you use them too fast but as a beginning player you want to use them instead of die with them so it's kind of like paradoxical but it's something that you just work on the timing of the balancing of the prioritization of so that you can be strong enough to not die but also have sustain and be able to get out of the stickier situations you find yourself in later in the dungeon, all right? So these are all actually all short bows. So even that fancy bow was just a Vorpal short bow. Not that that's a bad thing. All right, we're going to go in Heroism, and we're going to Finesse. And we're just going to stand here and see if we can kill this dude before he kills us. And we did. And that's just kind of the power there's the Komodo dragon of both of these things in place. Like, this Komodo dragon stands no chance if we're shooting fast. All right, we just got to watch out for the ugly thing, to be honest. And there it is. All right, so the, the ugly thing just by itself, we should be okay to take out. But if it gets a hit on me with the corrosion, I'm going to have to use finesse. I don't want to. I want to save the piety. Again, I'm being a miser with the piety. You might want to use it more readily just so you don't die. And as you gain skill, confidence, you will use those things less and less until you know when to flip the switch, which is part of the skill of the game, and it's really hard to learn. And I'll still die because I can be too greedy and too miserly with my resources. It's It does happen. All right, so that's Dungeon 12 done. This is as deep as I want to go in the main dungeon until I complete the mines and the lair, I think. And now we can do that. So we have that eight-headed hydra, and we have the orc warlord, but both of those with finesse and heroism, given some good distance, we should be able to take out. Uh, and I'm feeling great. We also have uh, the wand of acid that we can use against the warlord. We just got corroded by an ugly thing. You see how it degrades your armor class. We can degrade the Warlord's armor class and his weapon by corroding it, and then it'll be easier to hit. We do more damage, and it'll do less damage, and then added with our buffs, that should be enough to beat him. Um, so we have now options, and we can go back. And this is what you have to do sometimes. You have to, like, just find some other place that's safer exclude areas leave areas don't just stubbornly try to clear out a whole floor if you aren't strong enough get strong enough and then come back with your new consumables your new powers and take out the enemies that were too difficult for you uh, and this will extend your life so we're in a great position to go get stronger and we'll do that next time everyone i hope this is instructional to you uh, and fun I want to say thanks so much for watching. Any questions, just post them below and I'd love to answer them. Take care.